Just in time for this question. Flu shot or not? Uh, there's a great debate going on. Uh, many people saying, let's do it. Uh, what's your initial take on this idea? Okay, so I think basically we have to go back and look at influenza because influenza is actually a very dangerous illness. We think that because it comes back every year, it's not that bad, but 3,500 people die of influenza and influenza-related complications each year in Canada. 12,200 people are hospitalized with influenza or influenza-related complications each year in Canada. Now, if you think back to, you know, a few months ago when we were panicking about Ebola, how many people in North America died of Ebola? One person. How many people were hospitalized? Maybe around four or five people. Compare that to the influenza, where we have 3,500 people dying, 12,000 people hospitalized. When you look at the numbers, it's clear why we need to get the flu shot and why we recommend the flu shot. So so what is in the flu shot? What are we putting into the body to help prevent the illnesses and, and statistics that you just mentioned? So there are three strain flu shots and four strain flu shots. And what we do is for the, the flu shot, we take a little portion of the flu virus and then we put it in the, the vaccine and then we put that in the body, we introduce it to the body so the body can make antibodies to that small portion of the flu. And then when we encounter the real influenza, we already have antibodies. It's sort of like already having soldiers to fight the, the virus when it comes. And what's the reality? The BC Center for Disease Control came out this year and said the vaccine that's been built may not necessarily cover off the strains that are making people sick. How do we address that issue? What happens is we pick the strains that go in the flu about six to eight months before the, the flu virus, the flu season comes on. So sometimes the guess is not that great. Some years the guess is better than others as to which flu is going to be the most prevalent. And, and the other thing is what's happening this year is that there's a mutation. Like the flu virus has mutated. So even though we pick the right strain the match is not that good but some prevention is still better than no prevention right so we're still making some soldiers the soldiers don't know the exact moves to fight off the flu but they still know some moves and that's why we still do recommend the flu shot you know there's a significant amount of research that says this flu shot is effective and for those that say you know what I'm healthy I don't need the flu shot I personally have never uh, had the flu shot I haven't had it in years uh, what do you say to those who is the ideal patient to get the flu shot and really benefit from from you know the the, the, the medicine that, that's in there okay so there's several different groups so for healthy people we do recommend the flu shot because um, it's, it's a preventative mechanism. That's what we have to remember about the vaccine. Even if you've never been in a car accident, we still recommend that you put on a seatbelt. Same thing with the flu. Even if you've never had influenza, we still recommend that people get the vaccine. However, the people who are most recommended to get, get, get a flu vaccine are people who are at high risk of influenza. So that's people who are at high risk of getting complications of influenza if they catch the flu. So that's uh, people who might get pneumonia, people who might require hospitalization or even die from the flu. So that includes people under the age of five, people over the age of 65, pregnant women, people who are heavier with a body mass index over 40, people who are aboriginal, people who have chronic illness like heart disease, lung disease, kidney disease. All these people are recommended to get the flu shot plus their household contacts. And that's key because their household contacts can spread the flu to them. Okay, final comment. We only have a few seconds left, but the idea of mercury content in these flu shots, is that a big risk, and what does that mean long-term for health consequences? A lot of people ask about mercury in the flu shot. Now, the mercury is not in every single flu shot, and it's not the same type of mercury that we see in the environment. In the environment, we worry about mercury toxicity, mercury building up in the body. The type of mercury that's in the flu shot, it's a mercury-based compound. It's eliminated from the body very quickly. It's not the same type of mercury, and the amount is very minuscule. It's very small, so you would have to give someone four million doses of the flu shot every day in order for it to cause problems in the body. And we put the mercury-based compound in the flu shot to prevent bacteria from growing in it. If you're really worried about mercury and if that's what's preventing you from getting the flu shot, there are mercury-free flu shots available. So that option is there. Two great websites for resources, immunizebc.ca and fightflu.ca. Yvette, thanks for coming in. Yes, thank you.